Uh, I am Véronique Ginoubet, uh, head of the Sound Archive Center at Phonotech, uh, located in a campus specialized in humanities and social sciences in Mediterranean studies, Maison Méditerranéenne des Sciences de l'Homme. Um, we have a database where more than 8,000 hours are cataloged and almost 4,000 hours are available online according to ethical and legal rules. And uh, our database um, joined Clarine three years ago. Uh, but I will not talk about uh, these archives uh, today, uh, but rather about Sonorité, uh, a journal uh, for which I am the assistant editor. Sonorité is a journal of AFAS, the French Association of Sound, Oral and Audiovisual Archives, which was created in 1979. Um, it's, not, it's no coincidence that AFAS uh, was founded in the same year as the Sound Archive Center I manage in France. Um, it was a period of intense field work of recordings and reviving of oral heritage and a new enthusiasm for oral history. Uh, 41 years later, and two different uh, titles behind us, um, Bulletin de la Face and now Sonorité, we have 46, 46 journals, issues, and two special issues. Uh, we will present this, um, uh, two specific issues, uh, a lot of colors, you can see. And uh, we will present um, specific issues uh, in 99, the number 46, and um, a special issue, the second number, the second issue uh, about um, the archives of Michel Serra. So if you, the next please uh, uh, slide, thank you. Uh, so the 46 uh, issue deals with the ethnomusicological uh, archives in France in two ethnographic, ethnographic museums, the National Museum of Popular Arts and Tradition, le Musée National des Arts et Traditions Populaires, uh, and the Musée de l'Homme, as Museum uh, of Man, both in Paris. The issue uh, was directed by uh, the ethnomusicologist Marie Barbary Le Gonidec and introduced by the historian specialized um, uh, in oral history uh, and president of AFAS, uh, Florence Descamps. So, in this issue, uh, 10 authors present the history of the sound collection of uh, these two museums. Um, the sound collection of uh, the Museum of Popular Art and Tradition, created in Paris in uh, 1937 by Georges-Henri Rivière. Um, uh, the collections are now in the, at the French National Archives. Uh, digital copy is available at the National Museum of the Civilization of Europe and the Mediterranean, uh, the MUSEM, opened in Marseille in June uh, 2013. And copies are, are available in various local sound archive centers in France. And for example, in, the, in my sound archives at the Phonotech, uh, for example, Provence, we have a copy of uh, the files of uh, uh, the south of France. Uh, the Musée de l'Homme was created in uh, 1978 by an anthropologist, Paul Rivet. And the preservation of the sound archives began in uh, 1932 with André Schaffner uh, and became become the phonotech of the Musée de l'Homme in 1937. And uh, it was Gilbert Rouget, an, an anthropologist, uh, who created the laboratory of sound analysis uh, in 1967. So since uh, 2009, uh, all the sound collections are located in Lanterre near Paris at the Laboratory of Ethnology and Comparative Sociology. And um, I, I invite you to listen to an archive from the Musée de l'Homme recorded in 
uh, in 1900 during the Universal Exhibition held in Paris. It's a song in Provencal language uh, whose verses cover uh, the days of the week. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, in this issue of uh, sonorité, um, include uh, also two articles uh, in Varia. One written in English uh, by Marta Kurkowska uh, and Marx, uh, Marcin Staslak um, discusses uh, they, they discuss uh, oral history in Poland. Um, and the second, uh, the last article, open um, a portrait section uh, in um, our um, journal. Uh, with an interview by Florence Descamps and myself in January 2019 uh, with Florence Gétro. Uh, she's a director, uh, she is a research director at the National Center of Research in France. And uh, Sonorité wishes to give voice to those who have uh, worked in the field of sound oral and audiovisual archives. Uh, in this interview, Florence Gétro talks about, about her career as a researcher and curator in the field of music, her training and her interaction with Georges-Henri Rivière, who founded, as I told before, the Museum of Popular Arts and Tradition, and um, her 10-year ca career as curator of the music and speech department, the Département de la Musique et de la Parole, uh, at this museum, uh, au Musée National des Arts et Traditions Populaires. Um, so since 2019, uh, AFAS uh, has, has been publishing uh, special issues. Uh, the first was a catalog of a sound archive collection recorded by the sociologist um, Jean Métral in Beirut in 1975. And now Claire Chalon Grégoire, uh, archivist and uh, Arabic speaker, will present the second issue. Uh, a publication of a finding aid um, of uh, the sound archive, uh, sound collection of Michel Seurat. First, I would like to, uh, to introduce you to, to Michel Seurat. Michel Seurat was a socio sociologist born in, um, in Tunisia in, uh, in 1947, where he spent part of his uh, childhood before moving to France. His experience in Tunisia was uh, where he witnessed uh, the French colonization and the oppression uh, impact him a lot in his uh, career and in his commitment as a sociologist. We call it uh, a sociologue engagé in French. He studied Arabic in France, then in Lebanon and in Syria. He became a teacher in history in um, the School of Arts and Humanities in Beirut. Uh, and finally, he was um, a researcher in the field of uh, political science and, uh, and sociology in uh, Syria and Lebanon. On the 22nd of May, 1985, he was kidnapped by the Islamic Jihad uh, organization in Beirut, and uh, he died in, uh, in captivity in March uh, 1986. Uh, more than 20 years later, in 2009, Frank Mermier, who was then a researcher at the IFPO, the French Institute in, for the Near East in Damascus, uh, found Michel Serra's tapes in his former office. And with the consent of uh, Marie Serra, uh, so Michel Serra's uh, widow, the recordings were uh, deposit, uh, deposited at the phonotech uh, in Aix Provence. So before talking about the curation of the recordings, I would like to say two words about my uh, 
my personal experience with these archives. I myself uh, t studied Arabic in, uh, in Syria and in Lebanon. And I knew some members or ex-members of the Syrian Communist Party, which was uh, one of the main uh, topics covered by uh, Michel Sora. So the environment, the ambience of uh, the recording seemed to me, seemed to me quite familiar. Uh, the first recording I had to deal with on my first day at the phonotech was an interview uh, with a witness of the Hama massacre. And it was uh, horrifying. You may uh, play uh, the, the records, yes. يوم الثلاثاء اثنين شباط مساء The witness says that uh, describes the the beginning of the massacre with the with the call of the in the mosque to take arms and to uh, to fight against the, the regime. So this was my first day in the Michel Sora's archive and at the, day, the end of the day, I wanted to see what else was in, the, in this collection. And I found a recording of the Golden Gate Quartet, which was, which was very joyful. And I found it very powerful to deal with so many feelings only by listening to this recording, the horror of the massacre in Hama and the joy of, uh, the, joy of the Golden Gate Quartet. I am telling you this because uh, to, to explain how the archives and maybe sound archives even more can uh, affect uh, the archivist. So now let's talk about uh, the curation. The collection contains uh, 36 uh, recordings, uh, which uh, are described um, inside three sub-collections. So with the Veronique Genovese, we uh, decided to keep all the recordings inside the, the, ar the archives, even those, the records that were uh, already, already published elsewhere, such as um, music uh, records or radio records. Indeed, we considered it, it, it was a part of, um, of Michel Sora, uh, archives and uh, gave us uh, a glimpse of his uh, working uh, environment. We also have uh, interviews and uh, political meetings and uh, uh, oral, when we call it uh, oral notebooks. Uh, Michel Sora uh, recording himself. Uh, um, so I won't go deeper in the in the, the collection, but regarding the linguistics, as we are in the Clarin Cafe, uh, I would like to stress that there are, that these archives, especially um, the interviews with the Syrian and the Lebanese activists or political uh, figures, give us a good sample of uh, the language or the languages for maybe in various places in Syria and Lebanon with the use of uh, of uh, French and Arabic dialects. The finding aid of the collection has been made first online on the Phonotech uh, database, Ganoub. And then we had the opportunity to publish it as a special issue of uh, Sonorité. For the publication, we wanted to be more as precise as possible for the contextualization of the phone, of the collection. So uh, Elizabeth Picard, who was um, a colleague of Michel Sora back then, helped us, helped us a, lot, a lot in this regard. She wrote an introduction for the finding aid and uh, as well as uh, Frank Mermier who found the tapes. Uh, we also may add uh, an index with uh, by uh, extracting uh, the keywords from the database. And uh, the issue is available um, online and um, on a print printed version. Thank you. <laughs>